government. Your own government lies as a matter of course, as a matter of policy. The Tuskegee experiments on black men in the 30s, Henrietta Lacks. What are they trying to do? That's the missing piece. But it's not hard to imagine a government hiding, hoarding technology for 70 years at the expense of human life and the future of the planet. Driven not only by corporate greed, but a darker objective. The takeover of America. And then the world itself, by any means necessary, however violent or cruel or efficient, by severe drought brought on by weather wars conducted secretly using aerial contaminants and high altitude electromagnetic waves in a state of perpetual war to create problem, reaction, solution scenarios to distract, enrage, and enslave American citizens at home with tools like the Patriot Act and the National Defense Authorization Act, which abridge the Constitution in the name of national security. The militarization of police forces in cities across the U.S., the building of prison camps by the Federal Emergency Management Agency with no stated purpose, the corporate takeover of food and agriculture, pharmaceuticals and healthcare, even the military in clandestine agendas to fatten, dull, sicken, and control a populace already consumed by consumerism. And I encourage you all to go shopping more. A government that taps your phone, collects your data, and monitors your whereabouts with impunity. A government preparing to use that data against you when it strikes. And the final takeover begins. The takeover of America. By a well-oiled and well-armed multinational group of elites that will cull, kill, and subjugate. Oh, wow. What, what a great piece of uh, fictional content provided to us by the X-Files that definitely doesn't have any basis in reality. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Lukodowski here of WeAreChange.org. And there's a lot of absolutely crazy news to get into today. As, of course, there's going to be a prime time spectacle, of course, pushing the larger divide and conquer agenda, which, of course, Hillary Clinton is really excited about. Expect a lot of nonsense and ridiculousness coming our way. What's going to be happening? We're going to be breaking that down, plus a lot more, all on this independent media broadcast as well as talking about the latest troubling developments here domestically lots of things to get into so much so that we're just going to jump right into it as of course i think it's very fair to say that there has been major increases in crime especially in major urban areas in big cities cities predominantly run by democrats that have instituted policies that in many ways are excusing, condoning, and helping the proliferation of some of the worst behavior that you could imagine that many career criminals are getting a slap on the wrist for. There, of course, is one billionaire specifically that is helping this larger transition into chaos. He has been bankrolling and financing DAs and prosecutors all throughout the United States to be light on predominantly violent crime. Violent crime like we've seen recently in L.A., where a young man with an extensive criminal record at his age was sentenced to five to seven months at a camp as he literally drove his car into a woman and her infant child and then of course fled the scene and in another part of california a man who has been deported five times was just sentenced to time served after he was acquitted of a 2015 murder of a 32 year old innocent woman and with people like this literally being let out of jail the government at the same time is coming out and having the audacity the same people under the same political party are coming out and saying that there's too much violence out there related to a specific tool that they're trying to ban everyone from having. A tool that, of course, would allow people to defend themselves, something that the people of California can't do. Criminals get to reign supreme in California because they know all of their victims will not be able to stop them, since, of course, law-abiding citizens usually follow the laws and, and criminals don't. And that's why we've been critical of all these laws that essentially only punish innocent human beings. This, as New York just passed a new law that limits the purchase of a specific defense tool for minors, creates a government snitch board, bans the sale of, of body armor, since, you know, being able to defend yourself against shooters, especially in places like New York City, that's frowned upon by, by New York bureaucrats, and more importantly, New York just passed a law where now, quote, 
hateful conduct, whatever that may be interpreted as on social media, needs to be reported to the state of New York on big tech social media. Yes. Now, how are these new rules and laws going to affect career criminals that are being let out of jail for their horrible actions against innocent civilians? Well, I think it's fair to argue that, that it won't, as of course we have the perfect representation of too many laws and absolute lawlessness in Chicago, where routinely there are major shootings, major incidences of criminals not following the law, living in a place where people aren't able to defend themselves. That place, of course, being described as Chirac, that literally has a higher shooting and mortality rate than some war zones on the planet. But how is this possible? They have very strict laws there, you might ask. They have a huge police department that is supposed to be protecting and serving people and preventing this from happening. And yet now we have another reality check that, of course, the police officers are not there to protect and serve you legally, as they have argued many times in the United States that they actually don't have to do anything if you are in trouble, if your life is on the line. That slogan is, is just simply a slogan. And the latest events that we saw in Texas perfectly highlight this. We also saw this in particular other events like this. My friend dealt with a very serious situation like this as well, where police officers are literally standing by watching major crimes unfold, not intervening, not stopping, and allowing the life lost to happen, as of course is perfectly represented by the story of Angeli Gomez, an absolute hero in many people's mind, a mother that was able to go in and rescue her two children as police officers were standing by, twiddling their thumbs, picking their nose, arresting and detaining parents, as of course a major event was unfolding and children were having their life extinguished from this planet. Essentially, in many terms, aiding and abetting the the monster that was creating this havoc in Texas. And in yesterday's video, we highlighted this important story from the mother that contradicts the official version of events from the police department there. Today, we're finding out that we're getting reports that these are the same police officers that are trying to silence the mom from speaking out against them from criticizing them for truthfully talking about their cowardness. And now, according to this brave woman, the police officers have contacted her and said that she could be charged with, quote, obstruction of justice charges. Yep, the cowards, the pathetic punks, the yellow-bellied pansies are now trying to act tough and intimidate a woman that literally acted like a hero that day, doing the complete opposite of what they did. This, as we're getting yet another crazy, harrowing detail of this entire situation from a fourth grade teacher, from a Mr. Reyes, who was inside of the classroom as police officers were making sure that nothing stopped this madman from hurting children. And according to this teacher, the, the only reason he survived was because he played dead for over an hour as this lunatic took out all of his 11 students in his classroom. This teacher that went through this absolutely horrible event is coming out and saying that the police officers were cowards. And all the information we're getting, that's the least thing that you could call them. As of course, there are still some very serious questions about this entire event that have not been answered. My own personal perspective and opinion on, on this is that all the police officers here that stood back that followed orders, that created an action that literally led to the life loss of small children directly, as evidence now overwhelmingly proves, should all be fired. Every last one of them. Put them on the stand. Put them under oath. And let's really find out what was going on here, since, of course, there is an overwhelming amount of evidence of clear dereliction of duty, not following proper procedures, and creating a situation that led to more children not living today. This is a crime, a crime by the police. Who's going to investigate and hold the police accountable? Well, that's a very important question that I think a lot of us needs to start asking and demanding. Again, I got a lot more to say about this. I did a specific video about this on LukeUncensored.com, our very own platform where we get to say and do whatever we want. I'm going to be doing a video right after this one, which you could watch right away just by clicking the link down in the description below and checking out our own website, which helps us build this infrastructure, helps us expand and grow this independent media operation, but also more importantly, 
allows us to talk about specific issues that we cannot talk about here. Today's video, I'm going to be focusing a lot on health development, some problems coming up ahead of us. If you want to watch that video right now, go to LukeUncensored.com, sign up right now, and then check out all the amazing things that we provide members with, of course, not just videos almost every single day, exclusive merchandise, master classes, a forum where we could all talk together, and of course, exclusive opportunities for upcoming events events that are only available for members on LukeUncensored.com. Hope to see you there later on today. Now, I, I think it's fair to say that, that socially, especially life, if you live in a major big city, is becoming more turbulent, more crazy, more violent. And I think it's fair to say that there also is a correlation with this in our political sphere that is also becoming ever so divisive and dangerous, not only in its rhetoric, but also in its actions. This as just hours from now, Democrats inside of Washington, D.C. are set up to launch their show trial surrounding the events of January. January 6th in what is being deemed a prime time hearing, which they're pushing as a quote, major broadcast event. Now, this extremely biased committee that, of course, has been weaponizing and using political power to their advantage has even gone as far as to hire a major former ABC News executive in order to produce these upcoming hear hearings in order to create more of a media spectacle as if the propaganda efforts weren't apparent already. <laughs> They're going to be heightened with allegedly high quality production with the former president of ABC News, President James Goldston, who's going to be heading up this media spectacle. This is, by the way, the, the same man, the same ABC News executive that spiked the story of Mr. Epstein and made sure that the general public was not aware of his larger international trafficking and extortion operation of little small children for the benefit of the ruling establishment. Yes, the man behind coordinating the primetime January 6th committee hearings who's going to be producing them is the same person that a lot of people allege was a part of a cover-up operation that according to Kevin McCarthy, quote, squashed a story that, quote, enabled Epstein. This is, by the way, the same story that was released by Project Veritas, where they had video footage of the ABC News anchor Amy Robach, who literally was caught on a hot microphone saying that the network squashed the story she was doing on Epstein that, of course, had many prominent people like Bill Clinton implicated and, quote, had him. This, as victims of this horrible monster, came forward to ABC News as they were promised that their voice was going to be heard, only to be squashed, only to be censored by the upper echelons of ABC News, which at the time was at the helm of this man that clearly is heavily politically motivated, and according to many accounts, rotten to the core. ABC News had the opportunity to stop the hurting of thousands of children. They could have released a story that would have given children justice for the atrocities that they faced, for the horrible crimes that we can't even mention by name on this platform. And James Goldston is the man that stopped that and made sure that it continued with, of course, him censoring and squashing the victims' voices from even being heard, which is absolutely sickening and disgusting. So obviously, whatever this man produces, it should be highly skeptically received, as of course, I think it's very fair to say that there is a lot of political motivations surrounding these upcoming hearings, which the Democrats are planning watch parties for, planning to set up big screens to give out free ice cream in order to get people to watch this, or even just moments ago, Hillary Clinton is now criticizing Fox News for saying that they won't be airing this specific hearing. All of this on the heels of a former Trump advisor, Peter Navarro, who was just arrested, handcuffed, and strip searched, all because he failed to respond to the January 6th committee. According to him, he was treated like an Al Qaeda terrorist after a surprise arrest of him when he was already in communication with the FBI, literally telling them that if they needed anything from him, that he would oblige. They didn't listen. This as a lot of people have been recently arrested and when political parties start arresting their political opposition, when they start doing public show trials with people who covered up 
up the hurting of small children, I think it's fair to say that politically we are headed towards more turbulent times as of course this larger divide and conquer agenda is reaching a new level right before the summer that have now been routinely met with violent protests. Again, I don't know what's going to happen here, but, but I think it's fair to say that there have been some major political attacks and escalations happening that are getting absolutely out of control. As you know, I am not a, a fan of, of either major political party. I've been critical of both of them, but I think it's fair to say we're reaching a moment where, where the escalations and the fighting between them two are entangling almost everyone involved here and politically creating a very dangerous situation as, of course, this signals more instability along with economic chaos, along with foreign policy chaos, signals, of course, more troubles ahead of us, as I think it's fair to say that this political bickering is getting completely out of hand. That's my perspective. That's my opinion. If you thought I was wrong, in any way, shape, or form, let me know why down in the comment section below. I always appreciate the, const the constructive criticism. I always appreciate being able to see a different side of the story that I might not see. I'm not always right, but if you agreed with my message, it's more important than ever that you share this video with your friends, with your family members, getting the message out, even to random strangers, even to the old high school friend that you don't want co don't want you contacting, that you see his message, you're like, oh man, I don't feel like talking to him. Send him this video, or her, or whoever it may be, and because you do that I'm, I'm still able to be here check out the next video that we have up for you today on lukeuncensored.com especially if you're health conscious i hope to see you there i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you and this is why i love you guys stay tuned for a lot more here on wearechange.org